I'm actually putting together the next live stream festival called Don't Block Your Blessings. If anybody wants to get involved, I started when my mom passed away, unfortunately, um, in October. Um, the first one, I had 40 presenters, all live stream around the world. There was a music room, a live healing room, and an artist room on don'tblockyourblessings.org on the website. And um, yeah, DJ Kuber, one of my favorite DJs came in. He brought in about 16,000 viewers. And then we had 39 other presenters um, playing almost like a festival at any given time. You could jump in the rooms and see who's playing. There's like two to three people performing or presenting or painting at any given time. And then uh, the last one I did on Valentine's and uh, my mom had tickets to see Hamilton and then uh, COVID happened and then she passed away so she wasn't able to. So I had the cast of Hamilton perform uh, with one of our friends who built a piano that paints at the same time as he's performing it. And um, we had the Boom Bap Kids and Chantala and all these different people in all the different rooms. Um, but yeah, so the next one is going to be the one year of anniversary, or it's called the York site, but it's the one year since she passed. Uh, it'll be on October 28th, and uh, I'm just starting to book it now. So anybody who wants to get involved in whatever level, uh, present in the healing space or perform, uh, definitely reach out to me. We'd love to have you be a part of it. Can you just touch on the, the emotional um, impact from, I guess, a, a brand standpoint, uh, and I, I know you built the whole thing around the loss of your mom, and I, I know from talking with you, a lot of people connected with you over losses in their lives, and if you could just touch on that a little bit and, and how, how that helped it grow and maybe how that helped you, and just not only from an artist standpoint, but just you know in general, um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, we'd love to hear more. Sure, yeah. I mean, well, when my mom passed, it was like, kind of needed something to focus on, something positive, you know, and um, so the idea initially was to, you know, just reach out to different people to share, you know, just kind of like a selfie video, how to navigate the ups and downs of life. Calling it Don't Block Your Blessings is like, okay, maybe share a video of how to not block your blessings or how to bring more blessings in. Um, and then also started doing stuff on Clubhouse as well. And yeah, people would, I mean, everybody, you know, has this, these different struggles in life, especially just the ups and downs, riding the waves, you know, it's, you can't be happy all the time and everything can't be easy all the time. So it's something that everybody resonates with, um, whether, you know, they lost someone or just navigating life. Um, so it started in that way and I noticed, yeah, I mean, a lot of people were connecting with it. Um, the first one, the first video actually was my homie who he had actually um, submitted to Slay Sonics just one of his songs and uh, it was amazing and I just hit him back and I was like, dude, I'd love to actually make music with you and we did this track that came out really sick and uh, I called him, I was doing like an official showcase at South by Southwest uh, two years ago and you know, I was like, I know we haven't met yet but if you wanna like meet at South by, um, you know, and, and actually play the song live, and he was super down. We met about 10 minutes before we hit the stage. Um, and it was really, really dope. He's super talented. He goes by Schmorgel. He, at the time, he had a band called Naari, what I think it was pronounced. His name is Alex um, Morgan. But anyway, so I had reached out to some different people right away. And he's like, yeah, I'd love to, you know, do a video. And his video was, like, incredible. It's just, you know, after that, I was like, wow, this is so much wisdom that can be shared. And I call it that section on the website, Cheat Codes to Happiness, because it's just a way to tap into different people's experiences and what they've learned along the way, something that might take you a lot longer to go through. And he was talking about his experience with trying, trying to get out there as an artist and discover himself and try to get big and substance abuse and all the different things that came with it. And for a lot of the time, he was trying to mold into something that he thought would be successful. Um, and then when eventually he realized like maybe he should just try being his weirdo self and, uh, and just, you know, fuck it. I'm trying to be something else. And when he did, that's when people actually connected with him. Um, and you know, he just got to a space where he was felt aligned, felt authentic and just all around, you know, it had helped him a lot. Um, and you know, you say like, things that from the heart enter the heart. And I think when you're authentic and you're like, you know, 
being yourself and, you know, things that are actually something that you feel passionate about and authentic about that other people resonate with that and they can tell. Uh, whereas when you're trying to be something that isn't you, uh, a lot of times it just doesn't connect in the same way. So that was like the first video that came in and I was like, wow, this could be super powerful. Like this could be so helpful to people. Um, maybe they could skip 10 years of torture and not feeling aligned, you know, just from watching this one video. So that actually gave me a lot of inspiration to keep going and reaching out to people. And, you know, I've since we've had like Justin Long from Dodgeball and accepted and he did one and uh, Wayne Coyne from The Flaming Lips and a bunch of different people that, you know, I already thought were dope. And then, uh, yeah, the festival, you know, that was just like, okay, how do I take this to the next level? My background's like music and production and doing festivals. And so that was the idea with that. And at the same time, it was with COVID and people, you know, wanted to connect to something, you know, and like nobody was doing any shows whatsoever. Nobody was doing anything connected to other people in this way uh, where they're like all playing together, you know, and can see themselves playing together on the website in multiple rooms. So, and that had come out of, I released an album called An Album of Lo-Fi Songs That Will Never Trend on Spotify. So I did, that was when I kind of built the idea of like having these multiple things at the same time in rooms um, without the healing space, just live art. And that was covered by Billboard. And so this kind of came out of that idea. And yeah, and now because it's the, it'll be the one year since her passing, which is also the night my side A of my album, Beautiful Losers, comes out as H to the, I just figured it's time to do it. <laughs> you know, again, even though the last one had taken so much out of me because it was just so epic and so much work and so much to manage. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's just like, okay, whatever. Just got to do it again and push myself, you know. That's, you know, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's, it's so real.